Okay, welcome back. We're into yeah, we're into our next uh, hour, and we uh, just the last uh, class, session we looked at how how a young couple can manage their home and what are practical guidelines. What are some aspects in that one should um, take take uh, into um, take in mind? Okay, we're going to look at the second. Um, um, part of today, which is sexuality, sexual intimacy, and um, physical intimacy in marriage. Okay. Uh, now, this is this is uh, uh, an important part of marriage, sexuality, and enjoying a, a good sex, sexual relationship between a husband and wife, is an important aspect of marriage. And there are certain, uh, so what we're going to be discussing is certain instructions that's given in scripture, as well as some um, insights into how we can, uh, what, what useful insights can we take in order for us to enjoy this aspect of marriage, which is sexual intimacy in, in marriage. Okay. Um, but I think before we, get started and before we delve into this a little further um, i think it's important for us to um have a brief reflection about what what does sexuality mean to us because what you what you would notice and understand is um very many people do have a a very different notion about sex and sexuality that is that is quite contrary to what god and what scripture has um, you know has instructed and these ideas or these concepts or these thoughts come from what we have observed what we have heard what we have learned what we have been told uh, what what we have been um, uh, uh, how we have learned about this institution of sexuality, okay? So again, I, I think a lot of this, a lot of these insights do come, you know, as I speak to people um, uh, in in counseling. So there are times, and uh, you know, the what happens in a marriage. The ability to express one's one's own intimacy and sexuality with their uh, spouse uh, has an impact because of the way that they have been groomed in it. Mm, maybe it was a taboo; it was not spoken about, uh, or there were significant limitations in the way. Uh, uh, they have been brought up or they have been um, the upbringing came about like for example maybe in in the upbringing of an individual they've never been uh, allowed to talk to someone of the opposite sex till the time they have been married because of the fear that okay if you talk to somebody then it would move away into them having a relationship and they could be physical intimacy and as a result they can become a problem so the very way that it uh, you know relationships are seen can actually impact the way um, it builds up in marriage um, so recently i have a i have a couple right now who's having issues in sexuality because one of the reasons being the wife said she 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 comes from a more traditional home she said this was never a topic that was spoken about and there were expectations that you know you do not talk to a man you do not uh you know uh, uh, you, you keep your relationship with them very minimal um, don't even talk about questions about sexuality so even when she was ready to be married the questions that she had was never um, discussed or never answered, ne never addressed. And so then she gets into marriage and then she said, you know, it's almost like switching on, uh, 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 it, it's like putting on a switch that from 
till the time you're married, you're not supposed to be thinking, saying, asking, uh, talking to to uh, to a man. And right after marriage, you're supposed to be doing all of that. You're supposed to be talking and uh, you know sharing and being physically intimate and all of that within a day. So she was talking about how her culture uh, and how difficult it was for her and the way that she had seen it. Because the husband did come from a uh, from a lot more open culture where where his parents used to talk to him about it and you know there were open discussions of it. And so then you know you'd see that kind of a uh, issue there. So it's important for us to reflect to see what or where is our understanding and what is our understanding aligned to? Is it what society and culture says or is it what scripture brings about? So uh, I hope you all have thought about it. If there is anyone who'd like to share, uh, I'd be really, you know, it'd be, it would be nice for us to understand um, um, about this. So anyone has any thoughts? Or, or maybe what we could probably share is, when did you get to know about sexuality? How, or how, not when, how did you get to know about sexuality? Any, any thoughts here? Anybody? OK, Rin said, my mom taught in purity retreat. OK. And is that how you got to know? Or how was it? Did she discuss it with you as well? OK, great. I, I think most of us here on the call May, not, may have never had our parents actually talk about sex and sexuality. We probably would have read it through some books or, you know, got it through, um, maybe through friends. In my growing up, we didn't have the internet. We just had maybe a biology book or, or just friends who would talk about this, right? But now the influence is so much greater, but the information can be so um, misconstrued can be so out out of uh, what what really God wants, right? So, and that's why it's so important. Uh, and and I, we will be talking about this as we as we talk about nurturing children, right? Um, because that it's that's an area of uh, conversation that maybe as young children, maybe most of us here, I know there are a few of you who are really really young, but maybe the older ones. Um, we've never been able to have a, 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 you know, have a discussion. Yeah, I think Jacqueline said that. Parents had not even talked at home. I came to know from my cousin, right? Yeah, so um, all of this, now it, it's something that definitely needs to change. Okay, so let's, let's look back into the, um, into, the, into the lesson. So just like we, we know God marriage and desi uh, designed marriage, we know that God is the one who designed sex, and He gave it as something to um, uh, within marriage to be enjoyed. It is it is something to be enjoyed within marriage. Hebrews thirteen four says, "Honor marriage and guard the sacredness of sexual intimacy between wife and husband." God draws a firm line against casual and illicit sex. So God is the one who designed it, and He's gifted it to marriage. For uh, the for the sake of intimacy, for the sake of sexual intimacy, so it is something that is sacred. It is it it is the sacredness that is there in sexual intimacy. So again, in this verse, we do see how God warns uh, us against any form of uh, relationship, sexual relationship outside of marriage. That is outside the boundaries of marriage. So. Um, uh, even you know, even when uh, in premarital sessions, um, we encourage uh, young people to manage their sexual desires and keep it pure, uh, so that they can 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 keep it, preserve it to be enjoyed for marriage and with their spouse. Okay. Now, even through that, even through this, we do see it. Can, it is possible for people to have fallen in this in the area of sexual sin or even become active before marriage 
before moving into marriage, it is important to repent of this. Um, it is it's something that breaks God's heart. Um, God, you know, it, it said over here we need to honor marriage and guard it. So it is to walk in forgiveness, to receive the forgiveness, the mercy, uh, and the grace of God to walk in purity um, from this point on. The the power of the Holy Spirit is strong to help us at this point to keep us away from anything that uh, is tem tempting, but to also maintain that place of cleansing and purity as we uh, as we uh, walk through you know the relationships so god's the one who's designed sex it's meant to be sacred it's a gift and he wants us against anything outside the boundaries of marriage whether it be premarital whether it be extramarital or whether it be um, other forms pornography masturbation he wants us of that to keep to keep ourselves pure and undefiled okay now the next uh, um, uh, the things that we need to understand is why did God design sexuality? Why did God design sexuality? So if we have a couple of scripture that we can read. Um, would somebody read 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 to 6? 1 Corinthians 7, 1 to 6. Can somebody read this, please? Hello. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning, Anthony. Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. First Corinthians 1, 2, 3, 6. Right? First Corinthians 7, 1 to 6. Seven. Now, concern. I'm using New King James. Is that okay? Now, concerning the things of which you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife, and let each woman have her, her own husband. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have the authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Chapter 7, verse 6. But I say this as consensual, not as a commandment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony, so much. All right. So let's just uh, look at... Um, uh, you know the the reason why God designed sexuality, and if you look at some of these verses, we could you know we can glean from from these. Let's look at uh, verse uh, two. Okay, it says uh, it says over here, um, every man should have his own wife, and every woman should have her own husband. Which means that it is. It is important that a man and a woman uh, um, express and experience a relationship, sexuality with one another, with one another, so that it could be fulfilling, it could be healthy, it could be balanced in a world where there is so much of sexual immorality. It says, but because there is so much sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife. Each woman should have her own husband, which means that you are in a place of, of uh, maintaining a balanced uh, and fulfilling sexual, sexual life. So it's something that needs to be rewarding and fulfilling, satisfying for both 
in the marriage. Okay. Next, we do see is in verse three. Um, it, it's it reads the the husband and wife should not deprive his wife of sexual intimacy, which is her right as a married woman, nor should the wife deprive her husband. So it, it talks of how it should be mutual. It should be uh, enjoyed together. It's a place of mutuality where one is seeking to satisfy the other, the husband seeking to satisfy his wife, the wife seeking to satisfy the husband. Okay. Uh, it, it's it's not a selfish um, uh, uh, place where it's just for one's own gratification, but the need to engage with the spouse so that it can be mutually satisfying, ensuring that both do seek fulfillment and pleasure from from that. Okay. Uh, then we look at um, then we look at uh, verse four, verse four, which reads. Uh, it it's it shouldn't be used as a weapon against one another. Uh, so the the um, again it it reads of how the wife gives authority of her body to her husband and vice versa. That is, it's not something where you stand up or uh, uh, you don't use or refrain from sexuality not holding anything back as a weapon, especially you know when there are arguments or when there are fights, when you withhold uh, it as a weapon, not, not permitting, engaging in sexuality. Uh, scriptures encourages us not to be in that place. Okay, uh, The only time that it talks about abstaining from it is at a time of uh, fasting or a time of prayer. Um, and also in verse 5, it says, uh, it, it talks of um, uh, how how Satan has a way, has an ingenious way. He he can tempt because of our lack of self control. So he has a way of uh, uh, getting into this area and attacking the area. So it talks of how we need to be on guard and enjoy a fulfilling sex life, both the husband and wife together in this area. And th this is what. The scripture encourages us to do, which which shows that God designed sexuality for enjoyment, for fulfillment, for enjoyment, also for procreation. That is also to uh, to continue with the race, to to bring about children. Okay, um, if we read in Proverbs chapter five, verse fifteen to nineteen, uh, it talks of. Uh, I'll read that verse, or read those verses. It says, drink water from your own cistern and running water from your own well. Should your fountains be dispersed abroad, streams of water in the streets, let them be only your own and not for strangers with you. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. As a loving deer and a graceful doe, let her breast satisfy you at all times and always be enraptured with her love. So it's it's actually this the the scripture is actually giving you um, instructions of of this intimacy, is of how um, the husband needs to focus only the affection on his spouse, and and it it is both ways. Okay, a husband or a wife needs to focus their affection or pay attention to to their only wife especially sexual affections to their wife and how um, you derive the satisfaction and fulfillment from your own spouse the spouse delighting in the physical body deriving pleasure and delight because of the love that they share that they share and the the way that the spouse returns or lavishes the love back to the husband. So this is so through the passage we do see that God designed this for pleasure. God designed it for enjoyment, for pleasure, taking time to enjoy and experience one another. So that's that is uh, it, it is part of that greater place of intimacy. Now um, we also do read in First Corinthians chapter six, sixteen to twenty. Can someone please read that? First Corinthians. Chapter 6, 16 to 20.
Switch on the camera. Switch on the camera. Oh, oh do not. Oh, do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Till 20, Anthony. Okay. Please, sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So uh, through these verses, um, we read, uh, let's, let's just look at each of these verses. So it's verse 16. It reads, don't you know that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her. So it's saying uh, uh, that, uh, you know, the, the, the act of sexuality uh, is a mystery in itself, that you become one together. Uh, the, the mystery of the spiritual mystery of this physical fact is that you become one. And so that is why we need to be, it is an expression of commitment to one another. So whenever that is broken, there becomes a lot of pain and, um, and bitterness and, and anger that comes about. So, so in order for this mystery of becoming one through this physical act is why you know, we stay committed to one another. The 17th verse, it says, it is, it's something that um, uh, the person who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. It's talking about how the, say, the way that we become one with the master, um, you know, and because we're one with God, we must not pursue anything that, that, that creates the divide between what God wants for us. And uh, uh, when, when we do pursue sexuality outside of marriage, we are avoiding the commitment and the intimacy that God has designed. Okay. And that can never become one. So, and that's the, that's the uh, 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 instruction that Paul gives saying, flee from sexual sin, run away from sexual sin, because there is no other sin that clearly affects the body as sexual uh, immorality. It is a sin against your own body. So it is something, sexual sexuality is something that honors God uh, within marriage, is that which honors God, because he's the one who's designed the body. He's the one who's designed that intimacy, okay? Because God's the one who's made us body, soul, and spirit. And the it's the Holy Spirit that is inhabits within um, you know, in, in the husband and the wife, even during the sexual union, so that it makes it a satisfying and a sacred place. So in itself, um, sexuality is like a spiritual mystery and not just something that, that is only a physical act. And this gets expressed when they become one. So that's, the, that's another uh, reason why God brought it up. It's to enjoy, commit, enjoy intimacy, enjoy pleasure, and it becomes an expression of uh, commitment. Okay, um, there are a couple of uh, uh, instructions that are given, important practices that are there for uh, sexual uh, intimacy. And if you look at all of that, um, it's all to do with how um, you know you you you're careful about your personal hygiene. You're careful about how you express um, uh, sexuality. Um, what are some of the practical maybe measures or things that you do to keep it um, light, to keep it enjoyable, to keep it pleasurable? There are very many practices that are there which you could probably go through. Okay, um, It's also important to um, manage personal sexuality, which means, you know, uh, on, on, a, a, on your own, 
what is it that you need to do is a couple of things. Is one, to be able to direct all sexual affections only towards the spouse, uh, which also means not engaging in anything that uh, uh, that um, maybe not not just a person, but even engaging in things like pornography or masturbation, or even thoughts, uh, uh, thoughts of fantasy, right? Anything that keeps the affection away from the spouse. So directing all sexual affections towards your spouse. The second one is refusing um, the, any thought that you may need sexual fulfillment from any other means, uh, which, which like we, where we spoke about was, was general fantasies or um, um, pornography, masturbation, or, or even you know, engaging in um, uh, engaging in sexually sexual implicit uh, material, whether it be movies or books or things like that, to be careful that we refuse to engage with that because that's giving a power over to the enemy. Okay. The next one is to pray, uh, pray over these sexual uh, affections and consecrate our affections to God and make sure that we dedicate it. Uh, to, to the spouse. We're dedicated only to our spouse. Mm, it, it's an important matter also, you know, as we did as we did read that sexuality is also for procreation, which means to have children. Okay? So one of the major um, uh, decisions that a couple would need to come about is when to have children. It is true that God desires to see godly offspring. And we read that in Malachi 2.15. It says, um, his spirit inhabit, inhabits every detail of marriage. And what does he want from marriage? He wants godly children. That's what he wants. So guard the spirit of marriage, okay? And don't cheat on the spouse. So it is godly offspring that God desires be raised out of the union of a husband and wife. So it is good to discuss the, for, uh, the especially issues of uh, children and childbirth, it is, uh, it's definitely important to discuss it. Uh, and these can be some of the discussions that you need, you can engage in, um, uh, especially in premarital, we do talk about some of this, discussing when one would like to have children, how many children, what are the measures that one would use to plan their family, uh, what measures would they use to avoid uh, pregnancy, uh, right? Anything that is unplanned. Um, there are other situations that we also talk about is infertil infertility. What would one do in case of, of a miscarriage or in case of infertility? Um, here we encourage people to keep believing and to keep trusting in God while you may be doing um, you know, maybe maybe certain treatments that you may take on uh, in medical treatments that you take on doing that, uh, yet also being able to believe God for an answer. OK, um, it, th there is definitely um, a, an instruction of not ending a marriage because of infertility or because of impotence that there may be there in, in one of the uh, uh, in, in the in in the husband, okay. Uh, abortion is another thing that uh, we know and believe that abortion is not acceptable, and it must not be allowed um, uh, to anyone, okay. And only maybe if there is any kind of a medical danger or a medical situation that may warrant it. Yet keeping it in absolute prayer. Um, so what what happens if if a person, if you, if the if a spouse or his partner loses interest in sex, so there can be several reasons when a person loses interest in sex in marriage. It could be because of physical problems. It could be uh, emotional distress or emotional uh, uh, indifference, uh, or there there could be a sense of breaking down in emotional intimacy. It could be uh, uh, it could be just busyness. So uh, it is important to address these matters because 
sexual intimacy is one to be enjoyed within within marriage right so to continue to um uh, find ways of how this can be addressed uh, it's also important to remember that sexual intimacy is not just the act of sexual intercourse but it is also a, a, a place where that there, there should be non sexual affection that is shown either through you know touches or hugs or uh, verbal affection so it's always important to be generous in this regard rather than keep sexuality only with regard to sexual intercourse but to to really show affection um non in non sexual terms to really build that sense of being loved and being accepted and being affectionate so it is important to do that um also a quick note about enjoying sex when you're older when you're 40 and beyond there are many changes that the, that a man and a woman's body goes through women go through menopause um men can have challenges uh it's important to keep um uh, open discussions about it enjoy fulfilling sexual lives Uh, as as you keep going forward uh it it's to also address any kind of problems that may be there as we said you know losing interest in sex or all of that how do you address that so that it can be um uh, it can be something that can be enjoyed even into the later years of marriage okay um yes i'm i'm done is that uh, any thoughts any questions that that you all would have that you'd like us to address any questions there's no shame in asking questions especially about sexuality and sex no shame so please go ahead and throw in your questions nobody okay any any other thoughts any questions anything else from what we've covered up until now okay all right if there isn't i think we can we can uh, i hope all of you all have completed the uh, the assessments um the e learning students you have time till the end of this end of the course so uh, it, it wouldn't be a problem for you but for the online students it's important that you finish it uh, you should have finished it two days ago um uh it, the corrections will come and uh, yeah your marks will come too all right if there's nothing let's close with a word of prayer heavenly father we thank you lord for the things that we looked in today thank you that you are a god who really has thought about everything father the way that a marriage should take take place god you designed it in such a way that a husband and wife can really experience freedom and intimacy love commitment pleasure togetherness teamwork thank you god i pray lord for all marriages being represented here uh, on this call and whoever hears us god lord that we will be closer and closer in our design of marriage to you lord that uh, we will be willing to obey you willing to let go lord of uh, areas of stubbornness areas of difficulty areas of um uh indifference of discomfort you'd be able to let go and truly experience uh what you have created for marriage to be like thank you once again for teaching us from your word thank you god that um you you go ahead of us and prepare our hearts lord for greater things i pray for each a student here on the call as well as these elanning students thank you that you are uh, guiding them blessing them i pray lord for your uh, for your word and for your hand over each of their lives that they will 
see you, Lord, in greater measures. Thank you once again. Be with us, Lord, until we meet again. Holy Spirit, continue to guide us, continue to instruct us and comfort us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you all so much. Have a blessed week ahead. We shall meet next week.